Today, we're going to learn how to suture a wound and make you the MVP of any post-apocalyptic survival group. So stick around. Why wouldn't you? What's going on, fam? Welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything from the internet. Let me paint a little word picture for you. Let's say you're walking in the woods with a friend. Maybe you're on vacation. Maybe you're trying to survive a zombie horde. I don't know. It's your story. How would I know why you're in the woods? What I do know is your friend has a nasty gash on their leg from a mountain lion attack, and you are miles away from civilization. Luckily, you have a medical kit, and inside that medical kit is a simple suture set, not unlike this one I found on Amazon. It is also lucky that you've seen this video and leveled up this skill. Let's start. While researching this topic, I discovered that there's actually a whole bunch of different kinds of ways to suture a wound, depending on the size and severity, how deep it is, all of that. The one we're going to be learning today is the simple interrupted suture, which equates to a bunch of single stitches all lined up in a row to close the wound. It's kind of like the basic form of stitching. To follow along and learn this skill with me, it would help if you had sutures, needle driver, forceps, and a pair of scissors. I recommend getting this kit that I got from Amazon as it is only $40 and it comes with all the tools that I showed you there, as well as this nifty suture pad that uh, has a whole bunch of cuts and mimics somebody who got lost in a really bad neighborhood. So really helpful. Operating under the assumption that you've already cleaned the wound, washed your hands and made sure your tools were clean and sanitized, we're gonna go ahead and load the needle driver. You do this by grabbing the needle about two thirds of the way up and locking the driver in. The driver has these little locks in between where you hold it to facilitate that. You just squeeze and it clicks into place. Quick note, when actually using the needle driver, this is the correct way to hold it. Not like this. Every instinct in me said to hold it like a pair of scissors and that's not right, you have no control over it. I finally saw a video where the guy's like, yeah, no, this is the right way to hold it. So like this. You wanna begin by stabilizing one side of the wound with the forceps and lifting up on the skin a little bit. Now you wanna pierce the skin with your suture needle, making sure you come in at a 90 degree angle. Then you begin to supinate your wrist to drive the needle through. I wanna take a moment there to focus on this word supinate because I didn't know it beforehand. That is this motion. This is pronating your hand. This is supinating, supinate. I did not know that, but it is key to this whole technique. This motion, you're basically following the shape of the needle itself. So you're not pushing the needle through, you're letting the needle drive itself through. Once you see the needle's tip again, kind of poking out of the middle of the wound, you wanna move your forceps to hold the skin on the opposite side of the wound and continue the supination motion until the needle exit the skin on the opposite side. You want the needle to exit kind of how it came in, roughly the same distance from the wound and also at a 90 degree angle. So you start with the sharp part pointing straight down, you end with the sharp part pointing straight up. Now reposition the forceps so you can grab the tip of the needle and still continuing that supination motion, bring the needle out of the skin. Quick note, you don't want to drive this needle too deep. You want to stay within the skin layers. If you go too deep, you end up in the fat layer and that doesn't hold the suture well. You're going to cause more damage. Pull all the excess suture through until only a tiny tail remains. You want to keep that tail because you need it to tie the knot and actually make the stitch a stitch. Following along so far, I hope you are because your future friend's mountain lion wound is not going to close itself. Here comes the important part. This is called the instrument tie. And as far as I've seen, it's the way most sutures are tied off. You start by placing the needle driver along the length of the wound in between the short and long tail of the suture. Now taking the long end, wrap it around the needle driver twice. Then open the driver and grab the tip of the smaller tail and pull the two in opposite directions. You don't want to pull this too tight or you're going to damage the skin. Just pull it until the wound closes. You also want to make sure that at this point that the knot is laying flat. So now we're going to do the same motion to lock that in, but this time we're only going to wrap around the needle driver once. So place the needle driver along the length of the wound, take the long end of the suture and wrap it around the needle driver once, then open the driver, grab the short tail and pull both ends in opposite directions. Perform this action one more time and you my friend have made yourself a simple interrupted suture. Just remember on that knot, the first time you do it twice, every additional time after that, you only have to do it once. Now, making sure the sutures are spaced evenly apart, continue to add them until the whole wound is closed. Congrats, you now know how to do the uninterrupted suture. All of this, of course, comes with a disclaimer that I am not a medical trained professional. I'm just some guy who looks up how to do cool stuff on the internet. In fact, if you're watching this video, trying to learn to suture somebody up who's like they are in need of medical attention, that means you're at least within cell phone signal and should be calling 911. Not watching this video. 
That being said, if you are a medical professional, please leave comments in the comments section critiquing my technique and letting me know how I could do better. And medical professional or not, if you liked what you saw, please let me know by hitting that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you know when I release new content. All right, well, I should be going. That was the last skill I needed to complete my monster. In the meantime, uh, keep leveling up, you. Yeah.